Hello and welcome to Bricks and Banner, the show with real talk from the custom Lego community. I'm your host as always, Billy, and before we get carried away with this week's exciting guest, I have a few announcements to make. First, a quick reminder while you're listening to the show, you can head on over to the podcast Instagram page where I post a weekly wrap-up with photos relating to what was discussed during this episode. So if you're completely lost or unaware of something, there's a great chance that it's on that post. Make sure to go follow the Instagram page. It's bricks underscore and underscore banter. Following us on Instagram is a great way to keep updated once a new episode is released. And additionally, it serves as a way for you to share any episodes you enjoyed with others by simply reposting the wrap-ups onto your story. I really appreciate it. Next up, I will be attending Brickford, Virginia this week, starting July 28th for private exhibitors all the way up until August 1st, the last two days of which are open to the public. I'll be active on my Instagram story during this time with a few announcements of stuff that is happening, which anyone is welcome to join in on. So if you're in attendance, please stay tuned. Next, and I cannot believe I'm saying this, we have our first official sponsor of the podcast. That's right, this episode of Bricks and Banter was brought to you by Nate's Minifigs. He's been a big fan of the podcast ever since getting him on, so I'm really excited to have him as our first. He has an expansive catalog of high-quality resin-printed parts with themes ranging from Star Wars to superheroes to Halo and even some general accessories like pouches, armors, glove tops, and more. He's not locked down to one genre either, and I know personally there's a lot more cool stuff on the horizon. If none of those themes exactly tickle your fancy, I urge you regardless to check out his products because with a little creativity, many of the pieces have a wide range of applications outside of their prescribed usage, which is honestly one of my favorite bits about his product. Now, if you use the promo code BM4 at checkout, you will receive 15% off. That's right, 15% off with promo code BM4 at checkout. Support those who support the podcast and check out natesminifigs.com to purchase. With all the housekeeping out of the way now, I cannot tell you how excited I am to introduce this week's guest. This man really needs no introduction, but nevertheless, he definitely deserves one. He is Brickmania's lead minifigure designer, a prominent face and personality on Brickmania TV, which you can check out on YouTube, as well as an innovator in all things related to Lego noses. That is right, this week we have none other than Lando from Brickmania. We've been trying to arrange this episode for a while now, as he has been a big fan of the podcast. So I'm absolutely honored that we finally locked it down and got to talk. So with no further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Lando from Brickmania. Brick by brick, piece by piece, real talk coming live from the streets. Brick by brick, piece by piece, real talk coming live from the streets. Brick by brick, piece by piece, real talk coming live from the streets. Brick by brick, piece by piece. And we're here with Lando. How are you doing, bro? I'm doing great. I am very excited to be here. Uh, I've been listening in, and uh, I'm excited to see where this goes. Yeah. Absolutely. No, it's it's a pleasure to have you on, and uh, you're one of the first supporters, honestly, of the podcast. It really took me back when you uh, were showing support right out the gate. I was honored that you were giving it a listen, and you've been uh, an avid fan since. And I'm uh, Avid, yeah. Avid. No, <laughs> right on. I, it's been fun uh, listening in, um, and I just kind of, I, I like... Uh, hearing in from the community i i i'm a fan of lego myself so i try totally. to keep up with with everything so it's fun to listen in yeah absolutely honestly just we'll jump right into it P- speaking about you being a fan of lego i don't know much about you in terms of how you got your start in the community are you just an industry plant that you just you formed in brick mania were you an afol before like i want to know all about that so let's just dive in there how an you industry get your start? plant that's an interesting concept yeah so i'm, I'm like a, la- a, a lab grown like in a vat somewhere that yeah yeah just yeah. <laughs> totally trained for this um yeah i guess uh i probably started off like a lot of people just building lego as a kid mm-hmm. i think my first set was blacktron 2 oh okay. uh, Classic. Just some little like little space pod thing generic thing it's actually behind me in my little display case so Oh, I, kept well, you know. it. I kept it in one piece. That, I, was, I was really, yeah, go ahead. No, no, that's something special. Not, not many people <laughs> could say that. Yeah, I, I was really bummed at the time, though, when I opened it. Um, just like the, the, the box cover was this sweet neon green, like glowing canopy. Mm. And then like I opened the box and it's like, yeah, it's kind of green. Not like glowing, like vibrantly, like on the box cover, but whatever. It was, it's still awesome. It's a cool theme. That's where the photo magic comes in. It is. A Anyways, cool yeah. So that's kind of the start. You know, just been playing with Lego ever since then, and um, you know, maybe some dark ages towards um, you know high school and like college, where I didn't really have access to my brick as much. Right. Um, and I never really 
built like huge mocks or anything like like uh um i just again didn't really have quite the big enough collection or or i don't know maybe just wasn't that's maybe just my excuse but um i guess uh really getting back in was are you familiar with uh lego holic oh that sounds really so familiar he, he's i think he's on on lego masters now um i'm blanking on his name tyler yeah tyler cities Okay, sure. Yeah, he so he his builds, I think that was the first time I saw online where it's like, wow, you can actually really build cool stuff with Lego, not just these kits and these like like whatever rainbow builds out of your own brick. Mm. You can actually build some like cool um yeah, like cool designs, almost. yeah. Yeah. And then that sort of just led down the flicker, uh, the black hole of Flickr, where it's just like so much stuff. Like you, you were on, you were on Flickr back in the yeah, day, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and I, I liked the migration to Instagram. It, it is a lot more social. Totally agree. But Man, everyone, I, yeah. all of my friends, like that are from the Flickr times, have such he- thick rose tinted glasses. Like, <laughs> bro, Flickr was way better. And I cannot yeah. share that experience. I was just so kind of outcasted there. But I, I do really miss how beautiful the photos you could upload to Flickr were. Like you could upload mm. like three thousand plus pixel pictures, and just like huge resolution. Now we're on our phones mostly, so it's not a big deal. Right, that's true. Yeah, but it is kind of for for archive sake. Uh, kind of, it's it's kind of a bummer because like you're you're taking these pictures for your phone, and they're only like a thousand pixel pixels across. I think is what Instagram cropped it to. Yeah. So th- that means like, you know, in the future when we have like crazy laser displays embedded in our eyeballs, it's not going to be super high resolution when we're looking back on our, <laughs> on our uh, archives. That's, really that's just a point. A it's something I also noticed note. that I've deleted some of my actual like original photos just cause I'm like, Oh, it's on, it's on Instagram. Like what's the difference? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And like in hindsight, I'm like, Oh my God, that was so stupid. Yeah. It's, it's but, super low resolution, but uh, I guess the, the community <laughs> is kind of what keeps it going anyway. So it's sort totally, of, totally. Yeah, That's the most important bit. I've definitely taken more, more pictures because of just the, the, the feedback, just the sheer amount of comments. Yeah. That you and get easy access. To. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah, I was sort of back into Lego. Um, I had graduated college, um, uh, working at a coffee shop, just like any good graphic designer. Of course. Yes. Um, That's and, a hallmark uh, of, the, right. of the trade. Exactly. You got to pay your time. I think everyone should get a job in a, in a, some sort of service industry just so they know how, um, how good their next job will be. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I walked by Brick Mania. I'm in the neighborhood. Uh, I didn't. I oh, had no wow. clue. No clue what it was. Um, I saw a bunch of Lego on the inside. I was like, what, what the heck is this? Um, and looked it up online. Um, I was like, oh wow, I gotta, I gotta, like, get part of this somehow. Open mm-hmm. houses were going on every week. Uh, I stopped in and pretty much just volunteered my time, and it really has honestly just snowballed since then. <laughs> like, that, and it's yeah, that's so crazy. I would have never guessed that that's yeah. how you kind of linked up with them. Yeah, yeah. What so, year was that? Oh man, um, that like what eight nine years ago now. Man. I don't remember the exact year. I'm so terrible with numbers. <laughs> That's one no, of the graphic designer, too, I you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hence, hence the, the uh, digital artist, not not uh, an accountant <laughs> making cash. Um, but yeah, it's I started out um, doing pretty much whatever I could, mm-hmm. uh, sorting bricks, um, sorting brick arms, um, f- you know, working in customer service, working online, uh, all the different, all the different. Like you know, it's like five people back when we first started. So sure, yeah. Wherever little, they you know, needed a hand. Did a little bit of everything. So. Were you familiar with the third party scene before that through Flickr or? Um, man, I'm trying to remember now. It was Brick Arms. Was this the first introduction to something like Brick Arms? I think it might have been actually. Hmm. Uh, maybe I had seen on Flickr some third party items that. Like just in passing. But yeah, I wouldn't maybe right. have known. I, but yeah, I don't, I don't think. I, I, yeah, it, I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. So. So Brick Mania really dived you down this rabbit hole of the third oh party goodness. stuff. Yeah, it's it's a crazy, crazy uh, rabbit hole for sure. So then it's safe to say that that kind of developed your interest um, in Lego military, at least. Were you interested in history and military to begin with? or? Yeah, well, uh, so I grew up about like a mile away from an Air Force base out in the middle of absolute nowhere in North Dakota. Oh, boy. Surra- okay. Surrounded by wheat fields and missile silos buried in buried in the, the wheat fields that's not even a joke that's actually like a real thing 
<laughs> and uh, so it's it's like some of my friends were like Air Force kids, and uh, I like my parents weren't in the military or anything. Um, but uh, it was always, especially that kind of Cold War era stuff, was mm. always really interesting because there's this huge air of mystery around it. You know, it's you're dealing with like weapons of mass destruction and and you know the Soviet Union and it's it's so that's always been really interesting and kind of in the back of my head with with everything here so totally yeah that kind of answer is actually probably one of the questions coming up later is just uh what your favorite genre might be sure but, sure uh who knows who knows yeah we'll, looking, we'll, we'll save that one I, yeah I'm we'll save we'll touch it again we'll see maybe yeah, yeah. it is cold war maybe it's not i was looking through um on your instagram and i noticed uh way back that you had um just like a bunch of watch posts. Oh gosh. And yeah. you mentioned <laughs> that your your newfound love for watches was because you were designing uh Brickmania figures and learning about the historical importance of them in military. Uh oh, could yeah, you elaborate yeah. more that, on that? that? That reminds okay, yeah, that's totally that was a that was quite a while ago. I you know, I have I have like hobbies that kind of come and go and I, I still really enjoy uh wrist watches, but mm-hmm. uh I think w- like trying to do all the research for these different military figures, I'll notice, um, like, you know, they're wearing different, obviously the equipment. Um, but throughout the ages, um, you know, it's really important for timekeeping to, you know, coordinate attacks and just, you know, um, freaking see what time it is, you know? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, so you see these wristwatches pop up a lot and I kind of want to just figure out what they were. And that I just sort of, again, delve down into the, into the history of it. I'm trying to see what the earlier posts were. They were um, like way back. I was really just yeah, doing yeah. Deep dive. <laughs> Early I on, bored. I was kind of just posting whatever. Now I've just I've I've focused more in on the uh, onto the Lego shirt. Yeah, just purely minifigures. I ha- I started up like a little rando channel on Instagram where I'll occasionally post things that aren't quite related. Uh, first watch. I'm actually I think I'm actually wearing it right now. It's the uh, Seiko SKX zero yes. zero. Love that seven. watch. Wait, SKX one seven three. That's the European variant of the more common like American market one. It's it's. Anyways, it's uh, it was it's kind of like the the ancestor the uh, the um 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 grandkid of some like a Vietnam era special forces watch. So mm. the the current mil- the, the military watches they were using weren't very good for that humid environment. Mm-hmm. So they actually found uh, diving watches uh, worked really really well in that. Oh Vietnam th- yeah, jungle. that totally makes sense. Yeah. So I mean, it's 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 like a like a Rolex was actually um. You know, um, that's also like a diving watch, like the, the famous one, like the James Bond. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't personally care for Rolex a whole lot, but um, it's it is interesting, like the history of it. Um, but uh, like those are all watches like designed for a specific military purpose. And now we associate Rolex with like super quality. But yeah, and luxury and all this, it, whether or not it actually, you know, is is that originally it was designed for more of a, of a tool purpose, which mm-hmm. is why it was kind of like James Bond was. It was interesting that he was wearing a Rolex that wasn't like a common watch for a, a fancy guy to be wearing at the time, is my understanding. Totally. So, um, but yeah, that, that, um, there's a whole bunch of different wristwatches that I'll see. Uh, Storm and Norman, he was wearing like a Rolex and one of these diving watches during, uh, uh, Desert Storm. So that was, it was funny to see like just dual, dual wielding watches there. That's a <laughs> pretty baller <laughs> move, I think. I don't know. I just couldn't pull it off. I, I couldn't pull it off. And, you know. Do you wear it with the face in, like towards your wrist, or what? No, I mean that, that's like that. That's some real like super next commando level tactical. Dude. Like that. I don't know. I don't got time <laughs> to turn my hand. I don't got time. <laughs> you gotta see the time right now. No, I. I uh, I'm holding Rocket the computer like mouse most of the day. I'm like. <laughs> oh yeah, I that'd have... be so uncomfortable <laughs> just on the sh- on the face while you're trying, trying to type to... and all. Yeah, what's like the my daily life application where I have to wear the watch on the inside <laughs> of the Where you hand? can't afford to turn your wrist. <laughs> I'm playing Duck Hunt. Leave me alone. <laughs> That's the closest I'll get to that. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that was one thing. Uh I don't I don't know if you recall this interaction at all. I met you one time, a singular time at uh Brick Fair, Virginia, maybe three or four years now. Um and you were wearing that Seiko, and I was interested in buying the Seiko at the time. So I was like, uh-huh, "Oh man, uh-huh. can I try it on?" You had a nice NATO strap on it. Oh, right on. And um, so you let me try it on because uh, we were at Vic's booth. You were talking to him. Yep, I yep. ended up get joining the conversation. Was appreciating the watch. Anyway, I never ended up buying one, but I do have a Seiko now that I found at a a Goodwill for like five bucks. It was the Very deal of a deal. lifetime. That is a good deal. 
That's and I just deal. haven't stopped wearing that one since. But well, I'm glad you appreciate that. That was the, those shows are always so much fun. Um, and it's again like you know hanging out at Vic's booth. That it's fun talking with Vic. So totally, totally. I I love the uh, well. Before I get into that, the uh, are you going to be there this month? Yeah. The another month. Oh yeah. yeah. I'll be Terrific. there. Terrific. Well, we also have another there. one. Um, brick. What is it? Brick days, Nebraska. Oh, before that, but it's in Iowa or something like that, which is oh boy, I don't even he- I haven't heard a single thing about that one. Yeah, it's that's our first show we're going back to since since Corona. Man, have fun, Nebraska in Iowa. Speaking I think they of, originally uh, wanted the convention in Nebraska, but Iowa was like right across the border and cheaper. Mm. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Whatever, that it's, it's cool. It's cool. Speaking of uh, Vic, though, what I really love is that between the two of you, you can kind of appreciate each other's work without having to spark up any sort of, you know, animosity or like, oh, you know, because you're comp- sort of in competing brands, you know. No, I hate Victor. Space. Oh, okay. Right. right no, right. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. He, <laughs> guy's, guy's sorry. Garbage. I'm sorry. I was putting words in your all mouth. All of these you know, are just, they're all, they're all derivatives. It's just garbage. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> totally joking. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's it, refreshing to see, you know, just to see the brands uh well just different uh faces within the brands you know yeah show appreciation for others work and that's how it like you know going back to the early days that's kind of how it it really for the most part always was you know there's the outliers Mm -hmm. but like those like we used to sell citizen brick stuff we still sell um some eclipse graphic stuff in our stores occasionally yeah um and like it this community is like like you know we're all in it so much we kind of tend to think about think about it as this really big thing um we're not even like like all of military lego is is probably not even like a percentage of lego in terms of like revenue and stuff like that like it's there's still so much of the lego community that that like uh, is unaffected by us so it's it's we like to think about like, like you think about it as like competitors but there's really so much untapped like market, market that space it's yeah. sort of like what's the point of this you know or it's like you know our musicians competitors mm. <laughs> we're just making stuff that we like enjoy making so no it's it, a great it's, perspective. it's weird to think about it as as competitors i never really uh saw it as that so at least in the early days i don't know now it's all like getting dirty no <laughs> <laughs> Throwing, no, I mean, this. I think there actually could be a bit of something. Not to stir up controversy or put words in your mouth. This is oh, let's of do my it. own That's volition. I'm talking. Um, your own volition. But no, I think, I think over time, it's kind of evolved past that into people being a little more cutthroat and you know about the money, especially as people turn this into their income. Like it sure. started off all, you know, fun and games, a part time thing. But now people are feeding their family with it. You know, right? Feeling yeah, my it- change. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's money's involved. Um, I, I think just like the internet has made us all a lot more like combative with each other. Mm, like yeah, we don't. I, I totally agree. Like it, it's it's we're only seeing like the the top headlines that are the most like I don't know crazy and outraging. So it's just like we assume yeah, that's per, kind of something the, that's provocative. Yeah, well, that, we assume that's what the world's like, but. I mean, yeah, it's not the case. It all I, lies in the gray areas <laughs> in the middle ground that yeah, reality yeah, so. is. And so maybe that's just like people are thinking they they need to they need to fight something, and it's like I guess I guess uh, historical military Lego is there is there a real life battleground? So mm. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't I don't I don't see it that way. I think it's uh like even if somebody were to make a design that's that's very similar, like yeah, that's that's maybe unfortunate, but you know, move on and do something better. You know? No, yeah, that's I mean that's the healthiest perspective to have. So. But at the same time, it's like I also like seeing maybe it's more of a, like a timing thing or like a like a I just respecting your your fellow creator, I guess, like mm-hmm. your, your fellow like artist out there, like give some space for them to to do their stuff, like specialize on your own thing. And when it makes sense to like do that version of it, that's awesome. Like I love seeing um, like Victor or Joe's take on or, or, like, or like, you know, like being inspired by what they've done and then maybe when the times come like right, right, when the time comes for us to do like vietnam month like you know mm-hmm. and maybe like he's made some cool uh vietnam stuff in the past they've made some cool stuff so 
you know, snowball and keep going with that, not just making a, a one for one copy, but actually trying to progress where things are at. Of course. So, I mean, that's a common debate in recent times, not uh, getting in too deep on that, but there is something to say about like, not, not necessarily just drawing inspiration or trying to copy, but there is room for people to be working on the same things and put their own spin to it. Yeah. And I actually, it, it and I expand actually like on that. each other. Yeah. I, I totally like agree. It. Yeah. yeah. I just don't like when it's the exact same thing. Of course. Nobody does. <laughs> Do but, something new. Add something. Oh, that kills me too. If when brands actually make like a direct one of one copy of something that's out there elsewhere, it's like, man, you could have just spent the time and done something cool and new. Like yeah. this would have been way better. Yeah. I just think about the wasted resources that had to go into making something that's already out there. And that's just like, it's so disheartening. It's yeah. like, why? It, it's, and it's, if you got the talent to, to copy something, you probably have the talent to design something new. You know, mm. it's like, you can do it. I believe in you. That's a great point. <laughs> do it, you know, whatever. Uh, no, it, it, it keeps us, I kind of think about this, like in a bigger picture, uh, like Lego is like, you got the, the Chinese knockoffs um, copying and, 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 uh, you know, doing their own Lego sets. And I got to imagine that that's got to keep Lego going and, and motivating them to keep progressing things. Hmm. So maybe it, maybe it, on some level it's a, it's like a necessary, uh, necessary I evil. Go, yeah. I wouldn't go so far as say it's like a necessary evil, but it, it you know, it's, it's, it forces us to uh, keep going. Yeah. It's a um, natural part of the system of, yeah, it's a great point. So, I mean, we can't just sit on like V1 of our, you know, whatever German soldier. Yeah. Or like, what, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your World Spetsnaz. War One soldier. Yeah. <laughs> just generic something yeah totally or, yeah what was the uh will made that like generic uh bazooka com combined with an rpg no no what was it it was an rpg combined with a uh panzerfaust oh yeah yeah, yeah. it's just basic <laughs> he's like, like a bazooka yeah, yeah, yeah he's like man i shouldn't have made that <laughs> like, really oh. well like i mean at the time i guess it was cool because nothing else existed like that but it's like rather make the real thing as opposed to like some weird generic Com combination of things so mm. it's, it's always super hard for me to make like make a german soldier like well what does that what you know what does that mean oh okay right like you have a billion different units and like things and theaters and yeah it's it, the generic minifigures are, are harder for me to make in some respects oh that's an interesting point like less research but at the same time it's like well what what defines what do you want yeah 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 so i'm glad that we're kind of uh, you know, these past few years honing in more on uh, specific specifics here. So like uh, we did a bunch of Barbarossa minifigures. We're in the middle of that right now, aren't we? See, I'm working on like a schedule that's totally different from what 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 gets are... released. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm quite a bit ahead. You know, I got to submit a parts list like five weeks out, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, even uh, in my mind, five weeks out is pretty short. That's a fast <laughs> turn a lot, a turnaround <laughs> we, in my mind. We have a pretty crazy pace here. But yeah, we're still like, you know, we're roughing out a schedule like half a year in advance, at least. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we have like the next year planned because of like, oh, this year we did this thing in World War Two. So next year we're going to do this thing. Like that's that's some stuff kind of makes some stuff kind of makes sense. But yeah, it's it's it is a really uh, it's a it's been a fast paced schedule. This this first this first 50 days of the year, yeah, it was 50 days of the year. I had 52 minifigures made. <laughs> wow. That was, that was nuts. I'd never done that before. So that is a little bit, a little bit burnt that out. That is really <laughs> incredible. Yeah, no, I, they I weren't, you know, it's so. like they're not all completely unique, but, um, you know, maybe half of them were kind of from the ground up. Mm -hmm. Listening to, um, as we were talking about just briefly beforehand, the Cali brick click episode that you were yeah. on, um, I listened to the one that Dan was on as well. And just like learning about the scale that you guys are operating. Like I hadn't fully realized it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really, it really is the leading sort of company for what the military scene is. Um, and I, I don't know. I think just because I didn't use the kits and stuff like that, I kind of pushed it to the sidelines in my mind and wasn't paying much attention or noticing how big it really was and what you guys were doing. Um, but recently that perspective's changed and I'm like, wow, like they, it's really, like, yeah, he's not joking around. He, like Dan's, you know, he's like, he, there's uh, he, brand <laughs> like full brand new kits every week. It's like, yeah, what? like, like what? It, so when I started, yeah, it was like, we'd get a new kit out every two weeks or so. And it was just like one. And now it's some weeks it's like three new kits a week. Plus That's like so digital insane. instructions. Yeah, it's we, we have this uh pretty awesome um 
like workflow that down that we can we can get that to work let alone like getting all the parts that, you know it's just it is an astronomical amount of little steps here um yeah I think we have this like project list that has like every single step documented and mm. and uh like you know i i still like, it was just like dan and me and a few other people early on on that project list and there was like five check boxes you know because there's like five people <laughs> <laughs> but like now it's just like it's just like really snowballed from there and and uh it's it's it, there is a huge underworking system and and fail safes and it, it's it's a uh, yeah he dan's not joking around he's got a he's he's got this crazy thing going on in his brain and he's he's gonna bring it to the world and it's gonna be awesome we're gonna we're still we're still going man we gotta I'll, we i think we uh are just getting started honestly you know it's yeah it's, i it's like exciting. you were saying that the <laughs> military lego isn't pro- possibly even a fraction of the grand scheme of things of yeah. the whole entire Lego market. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at, is... uh, do you ever use Google trends? Uh, a little bit. I, yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's, it's, you can kind of get a, you can kind of get a feel on like where every like different companies are in, in relation to each other, where they are in relation to, you know, like Lego and, and like our different military contracts. And, and it's, there's, there's uh it is pretty eye opening to see like how big some of these like, like yeah we're, we're we're getting to be a bigger company but it's like i, I know everybody that works here you know mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. not true at lego like, like you know that's a that's a huge company you know thousands of employees so i'm gonna have to take a deep dive on those google trends now do it it's cool it's 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 pretty cool yeah so it's like i think we had like what is it? <laughs> this year I, I think i think this year by the holidays this is what i'm super proud of we are going brick mania is going to surpass connects based on what? google searches <laughs> that is so sick I, I think it's on track too we'll see if it does we'll that's see. so sick <laughs> sorry connects <laughs> <laughs> yeah so <laughs> we're gonna surpass they've just been dying over the years and connects like, fans are crying right now yes bro. so what's just... funny is we actually have one of the world's leading connects builders on staff <laughs> oh, there's a world leading connects builder <laughs> yeah yeah so um they were very active on the communities and, and uh, yeah, they built ball contraptions and uh, it actually changed my perception on connects. It's oh my not, God. So this is another late night, 2 a.m. binge. I got to go. It, down. It's, it's not necessary. So looking at connects as I never thought we'd be talking about connects on this crap. Um, No, looking at connects. Just wait until we hit the plagues. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Here we go. Um, No, no connects. It's a totally different system compared to Lego. So I think why we see it as this inferior system is because we're trying to make it's it totally different. Yeah. yeah, we're trying to make it do the things that Lego does, and it's mm-hmm. just going to be garbage at it because it's course. just like tubes and things. Um, but when you when it, it's a really good roller coaster, like we had we had a roller coaster in, in that uh, he built in our in our studio space. I remember here. seeing that. Yeah, and like that was only a few thousand bucks. Like that would have uh. cost you like a hundred grand in Lego. Yeah, yeah, that's like true. to get like to get like twenty feet. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> this thing is just like you could you could. You can get like so much like distance with as like a ball contraption, mm-hmm. um, like it's, it's it's like little rolling balls. You know, you've seen the Lego great ball contraption, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, at events it's and stuff, yeah, kind of like that on a bigger scale. So that's cool. Yeah, um, totally different system. I don't remember why we brought that up. Why did you bring that up? God only knows. <laughs> Come on, get back on track here. Let's let's keep this going. All right. Well, I just mentioned it. Uh, you know, speaking of things we shouldn't be talking about on this podcast. Um, you are a bit of a a bit of a plugger, as a plugger. Uh, as <laughs> being known in the community. Um, and I'll come out. I'll come out and say it. I'm proud to be pro plague. You know pro what I'm plague. saying? Um, bring the plague upon the world, man. This is <laughs> it's so unsettling, isn't it? What? It, so can you describe? <laughs> I know precisely what plaguing is because mm. I, I I am an expert in this field. Can you describe for the community? what exactly the ethos of plaguing is man i don't know if much of a description is necessary at this point for the past couple uh podcasts i've okay, been okay. slowly torturing guests with <laughs> um you know an introduction to plaguing but for those who are unaware plaguing would be um what what would you say the next evolution in plate feet yes now, definitely evolution evolution of course oh, i thought you course. were gonna say in minifigures okay in plate feet oh that's 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 fair yeah, right well it's an evolution on plate it's like you know when you look at the uh 
you know, like it's the monkey and then it's like, you know, progressing up like midway through is the minifigure and then there's the plate feet. And oh. now we're reaching full apex human of full plagues. Apex. Right. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, so plagues are just uh, an extension on Lego minifigure legs with some studs and some feet. And there will be photos in the wrap up to uh, bless yeah. your eyes with and cleanse yeah. your soul. That was, I, 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 I I guess I, I did not, I was not familiar with the term prior to, uh, so you see my picture on Instagram. I had, of like course. A, I made that weird minifigure with like the backwards legs and then yeah. the, it's really unsettling. Um, I didn't know there was a, it, there was a term for that. It shouldn't actually work that well though. Like but that's like, what I hate. If it, you blur your eyes, it's like, oh, it that, works. that's a nice, like minifigure. that's a nice, <laughs> it's, 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 this figure has form. It can pose nicely. Wow. This minifigure has got it. such great legs. I hate it so much. <laughs> yes, great legs. Please figure. tell me you still have that built. Uh yeah, it's it's a. Uh, I actually added. Oh man, um, the arms now are part of this new build because that's the, that's what's wrong with the scale now is that if you make the right. legs longer on a minifigure, the arms ain't ain't it. Mm-hmm. So I I don't have a great solution yet, but currently I have just the minifigure holding on to some like robot claws, which which that does isn't working at all, but it's also unsettling. And the arms are backwards too. So the whole minifigure is just backwards. It's just nothing's right about this. Goodness. I, I uh, had a print on that, you know, man. <laughs> a full there's figure always, design. There's always the woody arms, but then they'll have to be white. That's all you so got. yeah, Jack Stone is a good scale, honestly. Right, right. But he just. I think um in the latest integration of... um plagues from gabe he's used the jackstone feet in like some modified way is he like just hacking these to pieces i guess oh yeah you guys are cool with that aren't you sure yeah i don't know i guess he does mod them um i haven't dived chopping the pieces up man i'm a purist modder no i i I print on minifigures so i'm obviously not a purist so oh that's a great have you done any uh just straight up brick arms modding in the past oh dude um back in the day so I, I, dude, I'm, I'm old. It's, this is old school modding here. Um, back in the day, you know, the Lego Islanders. Uh, you know, oh that, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That red With the nose. Yeah. <laughs> um, do they have noses? I think the Lego Islanders is the one that had the nose. Am I wrong? Uh, that might've been like Fort Legorado. Oh, okay. You're hitting um, me with the Lego terms that I don't okay, know. Okay. Okay. Lego, the Islanders, it was <laughs> you like, keep the, going, you keep going. I'm going to so find it. It was, it was a Lego Islanders. There's this red mask that they're like chief or whatever has this like, yeah i know which one you're talking dude. about yeah i modded a what is it like aquanauts or like aqua sharks mm-hmm. you know those dude you know how they have these huge jetpack things yes like, these helmets? yes 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 so i like i don't even know if i had like an exacto knife because i was like like 10 i don't know um and like so i ha- somehow i got like a pocket knife and hacked away that helmet off and i made it fit with that lego islanders mask so it's the space islander that's uh, yeah, that's my first mod, I think. Man, that's sick. Do you still have that too? I can dig around for it. It's pretty, it looks like it was chewed off. So <laughs> it probably was, you know, for all I know. Is, that's the original modding, you know, is chewing on your bricks. Oh, totally. Everyone knows that. Yeah, I guess the uh, Lego figure with the nose was not from the Islanders. The Islanders, uh, the females had some pretty big lips though. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, that's the uh, Legos. Uh, that's how Lego does it, I guess. I love the old <laughs> style on the Lego stuff. It's really unique. Yeah. I forget who it was recently that came up with a line of um, it's like Star Wars minifigures that were just, it's like the newer generation of Star Wars minifigures, but done in that classic style. Oh. Like the newer characters. That's really that, cool. That was, yeah, that was cool. I, 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 do, I do like that Lego classic aesthetic. Um, were they for sale? I think so. Huh. That might be classic minifigs or something like this. I'm not sure. I don't remember the name. Anyway. It's so, I don't know, is there like a better way of keeping track of all these different names on Instagram? Because I'm having a heck of a time like figuring out. Not who really. Is, yeah. <laughs> it's all up to you. And then people change their profile pictures and then I just oh, have that's no tough. clue. Or like, they'll change their names too. And that's like, oh my gosh. I've talked to you for years and now I don't like, it's me. Like, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> it's it's the collective Lego builder. It's we're we're all the same being, I guess. I don't know. It's the hive mind of Lego builders. Totally. Um yeah, I, it's it's a. Uh, I do like that classic style that, that Lego, um, Lego does. I think a lot of that's that's from what I've seen of like critiques for my stuff. Like some of my lines are are too thick, which I don't necessarily disagree on some of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like I personally have a bit more of like an illustrative preference. 
uh, which I've been moving more into that recently. Um, yeah, we've talked about you've uh, talked to me about it, and I'm really for the change. Yeah, yeah. The, well, so we'll see. It's sort difference. of a subtle thing. Um, but yeah, originally like lines, I I tried to match. Like, I actually have a a um just like I don't know where it came from, but like a printout on Legos. It's like a Lego internal document on how to design the minifigure. Mm. And there's all these like do's and don'ts. And there's like a whole page on like like do not put weapon like brick arms is like crossed out. You know, it's like you can't have <laughs> weapons with your minifigures. It's like official Lego. Um, you can't print photorealistic faces on a minifigure. <laughs> like they had a they had a picture of like somebody's face like printed on it. <laughs> oh no. I need to see that now though. I need to commission that from somebody. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, I, I have a I have a um a decal one of myself somewhere. No around. way, it's, that's so cursed. I'll, I'll snap a picture of that and send it. Please, it's, please. it's pretty horrifying because I printed it the, like I had no clue what scale to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's totally the wrong scale. Not that there is like a right scale for printing a photorealistic face on a minifigure head, but uh, that was one of their don't their don't don't do that. Don't print photorealistic stuff on a. Dude, do you remember seeing um? There was this company that was like advertising like full 3D printed heads. Oh, I love that of, crap. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know exactly what you're talking those about. Those were so <laughs> atrocious, so creepy. Oh, it's great. I love it. Um, it's great. Creepy. Those creepy minifigures just make me laugh. Um, but yeah, the other the other uh, design aesthetic that Lego was like they had a standard of uh, make all your lines um, about one point. So it's just like a sort of standard uh, mm. measurement on Illustrator. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was kind of my guidelines starting out and it, I, I probably just stuck to it way too long and like should have maybe branched off more but you know it was working so right 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 don't don't now we're in a kind uh, of a transitional phase so we'll see where it goes yeah awesome i'm really excited for the change and i know but going i mentioned before that like the first time i ever met you but i think the first interaction period was me roasting one of your posts i was like man well not roasting i was trying to give genuine <sighs> critique but i was just like hey you know, these uh, thick lines just ain't it. <laughs> it. Ain't it. No, it's all good. It's all good. Um, I appreciate your response, though, <laughs> and it kind of actually um, touches a bit on what we were discussing just before, and that you said it would be kind of boring if all the companies did the same thing. Like, if they all looked aesthetically the same and they were yeah. all trying to capture the Lego look, like, wouldn't it get a little boring? And so I sort of agree. Yeah. I'm, I'm, because uh, if they were all doing the same thing, if they all had the same aesthetic... Then when you made your own Vietnam version of this troop or whatever it is, it's going to basically have to look the same, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's so I, I definitely encourage all the, like these kind of, there's a lot of new companies popping up, like find your own, like, I'm not saying this in like a jerk sort of way, but like, like find your own style. Like, like <laughs> actually like, that's actually like the fun of it. Like you get to, uh, kind of make it yours. And, um, you know, I think like the less like directly derivative of something like, the art like, you're going to be more proud of that as an artist like you're going to see it that as your own yeah um, and you'll be able to find a better audience that yeah you know but you know when when there's a there's a design solution that works like you know it's it's like yeah it's, you know if, if there isn't a better way of designing something i'm trying to think of an example and nothing's coming to mind but like the minifigure eyes maybe it's like when you change that right. it looks really weird right 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 so you kind of yeah, gotta, there's some standard conventions to the minifig yeah like the weird so is the white dot a pupil? Like, what the heck is Or What are we looking at with this minifigure? Like, what's going on? Are these just, like, undead beings that we're the looking at? The eyes are... I don't know. I can't even begin to... D there is an official name for that white dot. Are you serious? From, yeah. like, the Lego? Yeah. What is it called? It's a glint. Huh. So it's it's like... It's supposed to represent, like, a little shimmer on yeah, the pupil. Yeah, yeah. So you're projecting like a bigger eye under their head. Man, I've taken for granted what Lego eyes look like for yeah, so I've long. Yeah, I've looked way and now, too long at this. Now I'm scrolling through all my photos and I'm like, God, what are those? It's unsettling. I'm telling you right now, a minifigure is weird. <laughs> like the proportion, like you think plate legs are weird? You look at a minifigure for 10 years straight. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> I... Yeah. I <laughs> it's like uh the matrix i'd really rather just take the blue pill now exactly. and uh not learn all the obscurities of the lego minifigure form it's it's precisely why i had to switch those legs around on that on that plate leg it's like why is there a big front bump on my, all my minifigures this is weird <laughs> yeah once you start looking at the front bump on the leg you're like just ignore it just this, ignore it is this a thigh a <laughs> knee i uh... yeah where, so that's a good question where is the leg where is the knee, knee? 
So if the knee's right, so I interpret it as kind of being right below that that like front um, bump. I, I don't know the right way of except it's more of like a shin if we're looking at Lego. So yeah, what about like boots? human anatomy? Yeah, right. And then the boots, and then it's like, but tiny tactical knee pads, and like the typical convention of where you put knee pads now is on that shin area. So where does the belt buckle go? And where's like the flying <sighs> on many figures pants? Like where does everything <laughs> line up? It's that so, so that would be this would be like a human like our proportion being like fused at the knees like I think mm. that would <laughs> mm. that's a, just a very terrible mental image so that's what that's what I see every day when I design minifigures and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, we laugh oh, about gosh. this at work, just kind of joking around. Oh, I'm sure. No, it's. <laughs> It brings up a lot of questions that you don't want to know the answers to. Honestly. This sounds like I'm just hating on the minifigure. I do really think it's super iconic and like a lot of oh, fun. Yeah. I, like, I like it like, obviously a lot. So it goes for a lot of different um, artistic forms and stuff that are like sort of abstract. It's like once you really start looking at it, you're like, excuse me, like you just kind of take it for granted at this point that uh, it's like, oh yeah, that's sort of what a human looks like. Sort of. So sort like of, uh, the complaints about um, the scale, like people are like, oh that that looks like the wrong scale. Like when they're talking about a mock or a brick arm, mm, mm-hmm. it's like, dude, that minifigure's head is four feet wide. So, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you, you're not wrong, but yeah. One Scale. more thing that I, uh, I, I remember when you posted this initially, but I just was able to recall it looking through your uh, post history was that collaboration with the White Stripes. I'm a, I'm a bit of fan of uh, Jack White's music, and that was really awesome to see the first time around. And now I'm with the opportunity to talk about it. I'm curious how that uh, came about. Yeah, um, we had our uh, previous marketing manager. Uh, he was in the area where they're um, like they have a kind of official gift shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the record um, store. Yeah, right? Third Man Records, like their mm-hmm. official whatever headquarters. Um, and um, one of their higher ups was was uh, there at the time, and they got to talking and. It, that kind of just snowballed into a little side project. That's we so took, yeah, it, 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 uh, how many of them do we made like 300 of them, like mm. sets, like box sets. Mm-hmm. And it was only exclusively available through the, uh, third man records. Well, yeah, third man records. They had like, what is it called? It's not the stud club. Cause that's like a Lego thing or uh, <laughs> citizen, yeah, citizen brick or what are they doing? They, they, they discontinued that now. Yeah, now it's on the way out. Oh, man. Okay. But the difficulty is, like, I have a shameful amount of points, and you can't redeem them all at once. Oh, so no. it's, like, super difficult. <laughs> I'm hoping at Brick Fair, Joe can just, like, take them off my tab, just, and I just get yeah. a bunch of stuff. So are those are those redeemable for other companies that offer stud club points? No. <laughs> no, you don't. that doesn't cross over. It's like uh, checking it, like, hey, can I Dang use a it. Starbucks gift card here? Like, <laughs> Well, didn't, uh, does, uh, is, um... I mean, TMC, uh, yeah, is, 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 are they still offering stud club? Cause didn't they start that program like the same day? No idea. Oh, wow. I think they that started the same day. Okay, so that, 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 Ooh. I think that actually was a legitimate like coincidence. Like they started their stud club program the like exact same day, man. I don't recall on that. Like, so I, but I, I guess they both, it's just, they couldn't maintain it. I don't know. Neither. I'm of not them, sure. I, I know, one. um, um, somebody who works for CB and just like the interface to actually like package those orders and use the stud club points. Like when you redeem it, it's like such, such a pain to actually everything on the back end is just the biggest pain. Like it really is. So everything is just such a pain, like getting a coupon code to function properly sometimes can just be whatever. Mm. That's actually not that bad. <laughs> that was a bad example. I don't know. It's just like weird shipping rates. Like we have to, there's all these new like laws passing in like the UK and the and the European Union and stuff, and it's just like that's just a nightmare for taxes that we're trying to wrap our heads around. So, right, whatever, we'll figure it out, or we'll just stop shipping. Just to have, yeah. you have to just in store pickup only for everybody. That's it, or we'll helicopter it. We'll we'll, we'll strike a deal with like Lockheed Martin. Get the uh, Amazon drones to come pick. Oh up. right, oh we have a we have a, a a person in office that is an expert drone drone flyer so we did Look a fly through video a bit ago i don't know if you guys saw that on our youtube uh, oh yes i did actually that was really sweet yeah so that was a while back right or mm, I... no that was like within the past month oh, okay then i didn't see it I'm yeah you just like a fly else. through into the into the store actually okay i'll have to check that out i must be thinking of something else then that's cool 
Yes, we'll so we'll, we'll we'll drone deliver everything. That'd be awesome. I'd love it. Free uh, free <laughs> free Brickmania kits with each drone strike you purchase. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's a that's probably a good deal. <laughs> free wait, drones like stri- yeah, okay. Like the drone would drop <laughs> munitions on your house and mm-hmm. But you got a free Brickmania kit at the end of it. Like And that I mean they hold on to their resale value decently, so. Right. Right. Your house, you can't it's say an the investment. Same. You never know with a house, it could get like destroyed by a drone strike. You know, it's a risk. Yeah, you could just commit insurance fraud fraud and get a brick mania kit. Like, think about the perks here. Two, two for one deal, guys. Come on. We're losing we're losing money even talking about this right now. <laughs> Somebody else is gonna take us up on that idea. I'll have to delete it. So, gotta, someone's gonna take you up on, on a drone strike to your house. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna happen. It's a booming market. You don't know. You don't know. Future world is going to be cool. If you build it, they'll come. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's drone drone strike domino deliver. Like <laughs> this hot and ready pizza explodes into your living room. Living room, like uh, it's not delivery. It's a drone strike. Oh gosh, <laughs> that's great. This, this, we're on, we gotta write this down. <laughs> Take send notes. It to, send it to Domino's. Drone strike, please. Yeah. Well. I got one more thing I wanted to ask before we uh, just wrap up with a few questions and then <laughs> copper drop is uh, how does it feel being an innovator of the Lego schnoz movement? Oh gosh. Why would you? Oh, um, it, it could be the podcast if we didn't mention it. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, I, I, I don't even know. So it's, I'm, it's this one figure. It's this German special forces, <laughs> this KSK. I don't know, going through, like, I, I pull up a bunch of source photos when I design a minifigure. And, uh, you know, go. I had this like, little, like, nice, like, collage going on. All yeah, pin, yeah, yeah. All Pinterest, Pinterest, Pinterest-y and nice and whatever, and just cool looking. But then I noticed that every other, like, Special Forces dude had his, like, nose hanging out of his balaclava <laughs> thing. And it's like, I, I guess, like, that's efficient for, like, airflow or something. I don't know. Or maybe it's, like, cool, like... You know how like the Russians they have like their their like helmets tilted back a lot. That's like mm. that's like cool. Is this like cool to have your nose hanging out? Like this is what let like, your nose s- hang. Your sleeves are rolled up. It's like it's like the special like you know high speed low drag. You know of course um, of course. So I I th- you know I thought it was Legos had a few noses on minifigures, right? Let's let's, a few. let's get that out of the way. They started it, not me. <laughs> they started this war now they can handle it <laughs> so now this is this is where it's this is the logical conclusion is is a nose hanging out of a balaclava head and i i hope i don't have an excuse to do a nose again because they're horrifying <sighs> <laughs> i'm not you want this to be like a standard thing on every figure no but or is this like a like a checkbox and check out like nose on your figure like five dollars extra <laughs> you're gonna start selling nose and non-nose versions of your figures yeah, Matt Damon with a nose. It's gonna be great. Oh gosh, be great. I just what I don't like is that on your design it actually works. Yeah, it shouldn't. I, mean, I like that's it, exactly but it works. my thought. I, I hated it. <laughs> it worked, but <laughs> freaking nose minifigure. I don't. And know. now here it is. <laughs> and now you see all these other minifigures that Legos made that have like implied noses. Like you can see the nose right there. Mm. They just didn't draw a line. I don't know. It's like in their mustache or something. There's a lot of those. All right. Just keep an eye out for it. I'm not right, lying. Well, I'm not lying. Okay. Yeah. I hope that answered your. Yeah. No, I just need, I needed to mention it. It was a yeah. checklist item. We had to get that off the. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, it's, it's a, it's a, I don't know. Blessing. How does it curse. feel? How does it feel knowing that's going to be your greatest contribution to the like Yeah. Community? Right. It's all down here, downhill from here. <laughs> There'll be like a beautiful nose carved in on my tombstone. Is that what's. Right. Right. <laughs> The painter of noses. Brilliant. Um, yeah, it's it's an honor. Thank you. I, I love it. I hate it. All right. So going through some of the questions that have been submitted uh, through Instagram. What design has challenged you the most? What design has challenged me the most? Um, so early on, um, I guess the first minifigure I, I designed would have been that Marine, like V1, obviously. Mm. Um, and that, that transition from, um, like the sketchbook or something, I usually, I try to start out with a sketchbook whenever possible. Um, but having never designed a minifigure before, um, you know, that was, that was kind of like 
a pretty huge learning curve. Um, and we actually got like, we, we sent it off to a printer and they actually messed up the print file luckily. <laughs> and, uh, it didn't print, like there was a certain color that didn't print right at all. So we had to like, we had to, um, like clean them and, uh, start over. And, um, but in that, in that moment, I, I was able to revamp my design a little bit because all the lines were just way too fine. And, uh, so I was lucky that they messed up. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, so they're actually like my very first minifigure, like completely got like scrapped and, uh, we started to really give it a redesign. That's good. I, I think I have it somewhere. I lost it cause it was so bad. Like I was just like, I kept it as like, this is the worst minifigure that has ever been made. <laughs> It's in my, I, I lost it though. So there's maybe somewhere out there, the worst minifigure ever. Um, and then, and then the next version was slightly better and, uh, the lines read more cleanly. So like learning a new style, like my own style or, or derivative from Lego, um, and how to print that on a minifigure. That was definitely the most challenging one. Right. Um, in terms of, uh, like research, um, recently the Barbarossa minifigures, the, the Germans have an insane amount of color, uh, combination on their, um, on their like uh, collar tabs and um, like Waffenfarb, I think it's called. Um, but like every single division has a different uh, color, color coded. And it's just like, man, you guys, that, that's, I get it. You're trying to organize things into your perfect vision, but man, this is like not making, man, not making it easy for me <laughs> or anybody, uh, whatever. Yeah. So um, yeah. Um, those collar tabs, just making sure the colors were hopefully right. And uh, I mean, they changed like, so we, the original original request was to make some Panzer Grenadiers, but um, digging into the history, Panzer Grenadiers weren't formed until forty two. Mm-hmm. So it's it's prior to that. It was like mechanized infantry, which were different. You know, they were attached. There was a different color collar tab. So, um, yeah, and we're because we're doing Barbarossa, which is uh, forty one. So uh, had to kind of midway through change up the design a little bit. Gotcha. So yeah, research um, researching is is one of the more difficult spots now. All right. Have you ever had a design that you wanted to do, but it just wasn't feasible for a particular reason? What was the reason and like why? Yeah. Um, I really want to make a doge head minifigure. Oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, that got, that got next. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't go over well in the planning uh, meeting. I, I didn't even, I didn't even bring it up. Oh, okay. I think you should. There's potential. <laughs> I just want to, a little dogecoin dog i don't know it's a dumb idea it's stupid um i didn't even know I, I wouldn't even suggest that one let's see what actually was like feasible that we couldn't do uh like early on there was so much stuff because like we we didn't have 3d printers and brick arms had a more limited selection mm. so it's like the german stuff the russian stuff um we were just we either were using the m1 steel pot helmet as a stand-in for their uh what is that SSH 40, something like that. Um, for the Russian helmet, World War II helmet, we were just using a stand in. Um, so that was cool when Will finally uh, released his German um, or his uh, Russian helmet. Right. Yeah. Those early on figures are, are lots like pretty simple. So those are the limitations there. Yeah. It makes sense. And now it feels like everything's, uh, well, yeah, we can just, everything's we can, possible. We can 3d Sky's print it now. Um, you know, it's like the 3d printing quality and technique is getting better. Um, mm-hmm. It's not quite to like a one for one level of uh, ABS, but I think uh, I wouldn't have thought this five years ago, but now I'm starting to suspect that I think 3D printing might actually be able to match uh, Could ABS be the future. soon. Man, that's crazy. I, I never, I really wouldn't have thought it. So. No, I mean, I wouldn't have either. And I mean, it's really just because of the resin printing, the innovations yeah. there. Yeah. So we'll see where, I, th- I mean, I think they're, there's going to be, you know, they came up with resin printing. They'll come up with another technique someday, you know, it's. Mm. I, I'm uh, I'm I'm waiting for that uh, Star Trek replicator, man. <laughs> infinite, you know, olive bricks, military um, olive bricks. It's gonna be the right. All color. the all the sand red you could dream of. Yep. Somebody else actually asked that. What's your favorite Lego color? Oh man, uh, teal. No, that's totally wrong answer. Why would I say that? Oh, teal. <laughs> um, Shout out to Turk. <laughs> let's see, my favorite Lego color. Old gray is really, or old, uh, old dark gray is really. Awesome. Oh, okay. You're an old dark gray fan. Yeah, I really am. It's, it's, it's a, it was a great color. Um, and they officially didn't, do did they ever admit to changing it? I don't know. 
because they officially like initially on they're like we didn't we didn't uh change we didn't change anything it's what are you talking about this is <sighs> like no i'm looking at it right now and like you did change something and then they were like okay you can trade all your bricks in i think is what they were saying it's like you could really? trade your maybe i'm making that up but i remember there being a like a trade in program for your old gray huh yeah Man. old gray is a old gray is old awesome thing. old gray is awesome. what else is cool um what are i mean what's your favorite color Man, oh well. If we in go the, by the collect- Lego, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If we go by collecting stuff, I collect a uh, light pink um, light on my pink. citizen brick parts. But I think probably olive is olive and dark tan. I love just because if I'm actually building something, I'm trying to. I, I gotta bust out my brick arms collection and look through those. Like, I see what what are some cool colors that uh, Will's done recently. He's gotten some crazy stuff for the world uh, workshop wonders. I was waiting because he was using a lot of like the same sort of stuff for a while, but he's busted out the coral and the turquoise lately. So it's pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. So I got my brick arms collection here. Um, there was like a, I don't they were like freebies and I think it was at brick fair, Virginia. And it was like this weird, like it wasn't cotton candy. It was like this coral pink color. Mixed oh with yeah. Like, I know what you color you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Oh man. And it was like swirled with like light blue. It was so weird. Dude, those AKs, the yeah. AK promo that he did was the best promo ever. <laughs> was that those, like, those were all so AKs? Uh, I think so, yeah. It was like it's like totally like 1980s like puke color. It's great. Mm, that is it. Yeah, that's <laughs> 1980s puke. That's what Or like you ate too much cotton candy and yeah. And also puke. This is what you, yeah. <laughs> and then you injected it. Um actually um favorite Lego colors would definitely be like transparent neon orange right that, for the chainsaw totally <laughs> like the coolest lego piece ever is that transparent neon orange chainsaw um glow in the dark is also really awesome glow in the dark's good yeah and then um transparent smoke is really sweet as well mm. so those are those are kind of my favorites all right is there a holy grail project that you haven't done yet holy grail oh man um I really want to make some Soviet. Well, if I say it now, somebody else is going to make it, but whatever. Um, I want to make some Soviet Afghan war um, uh, paratrooper dudes. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, specifically um, with those blue knockoff Adidas that those guys would wear. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember there was a company recently that was making those figures. I'd, I'd love the... Oh, the, okay, so it's been done. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's like... um, they're, They sell them for super cheap. They're over in Russia. Uh, It's do like 12 they, bucks they have for a figure. The, do they have the blue Adidas? Yes, they wow. do. Wow, okay, that's excellent oh, man. attention. I really deal. need to find this for you. Hold on. They might... Did they even like, realize that... Like, Did they just think that was normal? Like, if, if they're from... If they're from... Like, they see this firsthand then. Like, Gosh, I don't know. I... Again, you were just talking about how do you keep track of all these names on people on Instagram. I can't, don't even know where to start to find this. I need like a giant like keyword document search that just like plate feet builder. And then you would plate pop up. <laughs> and then they change their name. So then you can't actually find them. Build like garbage. And then you pop up. Just kidding. I, I, yeah, I build like I build like garbage. No, you got me there. This week I got to start on my uh, build. I'm in a collab, collab for uh virginia and uh there's no no time like last minute to build so no that's the best time i i'm I'm, uh i full i full heartedly embrace procrastination um you'll get your best work done don't listen to me um yeah no so what is that a month out not even just the end of this month the 28th starts oh it came so fast Um, i know dude i thought up until this month i thought i had like another whole month like I had two months away. I thought it was two months away. And I was like, all right, yeah, I still got plenty of time to do all the stuff I need to do. And then I checked the calendar and I was like, oh, I am like entirely wrong. Like, I, I could have swore that, that up until, yeah, this month that that brick fair wasn't for another at least year, like easily, easily. Yeah. That's how far away it was. No. I, yeah, I have just have a terrible, terrible sense of uh, that's why I procrastinate. I don't know any better. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it did seem definitely a lot further away, but that's awesome that it's uh it's coming up. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'll be at uh, Nebraska Brick Days, I think it's called, and then there'll be a week in between, and then it's the uh, Brick Fair Virginia. It's gonna be awesome. 
It's gonna be so. It's awesome. gonna be crazy this year. And Dan's like Dan's here right now. He's been here all weekend. Um, I'm I'm currently at Brickmania. Um, but he's uh, so nobody else is in the office because it's like the holiday observed. Mm, and right. uh, but he's just you know he's just kind of been in here all weekend working on the uh on the um the make an island carrier okay, the uh, assault ship. So that's yep. gonna be getting an appearance there. Crazy, crazy. So we'll see once it's like bristling with helicopters and stuff. So I'm trying to find this. Um, You're still looking for the shoes. Yeah. And I looked it up on Google, but look what I came across. This is like weird. Weird. It's just um, an enamel pin of a Soviet Lego figure with a brick arms PPFSH. That sounds awesome. It's kind of badass. We got to make more enamel pins. That's a, that's a definite cop for me. Yeah, if the shipping that, wasn't so crazy, I mean, no, it's only fifteen bucks, really. Once you look yeah, at yeah, it for in total, bucks for a janky, awesome pin. It actually, it's kind of badass, though. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it's. I'm adding <laughs> that, that to my watch list. Though. I might it. have to buy that. Is that eBay? What is this? Yeah, yeah, it's on eBay. Here, I'll send you the actual link for. Dang, you. we got to commission like a thousand of those. Just everybody gets this weirdly angry dude. <laughs> I like the, I like the grenade, just straight up, like just. Straight up in that amp in the in the belt, just that, a vaguely uh, familiar torso that's sort of CV, but it's not. Oh wait, I just sent you. I did. I sent you the image twice instead of actually yes. giving you the link. Now you can enjoy double. Enjoy it double. All yes. Right. For those of you who don't know, you you put all a lot of these images in the uh, yeah. Of wrap course, up it'll be in the wrap your, up on your Instagram, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. On the can, bricks and excuse Instagram. me for a split second. I'm like. You know, listening to previous episodes, like they're talking about stuff. This is cool. What are they talking about? And but I'm still, you know, just still kind of smiling, feeling slightly left out as you guys are laughing about cool stuff that I'm not knowing what's going on. But now I know because it's all on Instagram. Yep, that's where it's happening. Now I know. Bricks underscore. Uh, wait, let me double check. I don't even know what the Instagram <laughs> is. <laughs> Bricks and yeah, yeah, yeah. I was right. Bricks underscore and underscore banter. Woo. Was that your original th- original title for this program? No, actually, the first uh, iteration was Billy's Basement. I, I'm bummed that that didn't. Uh, okay. Yeah, a lot of people. It, <laughs> it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way when I didn't go with Billy's Basement. But <laughs> is that that's like the that's like the uh, Patreon account. That's that's the after hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Discord uh, is called Billy's Basement that I there have set up. There we go. Okay, so it's still there. It's it's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's gotten its uh its spotlight, but um yeah, I can't even remember what um I think I was discussing what to call it with my mom, and we both agreed that like I can't put my name in it because it's just like I don't I don't know. It's it doesn't tell what the show's about in any way. Um, sure. so I wanted to have it have a broader appeal like that, and. Yeah, I don't know. I think just bouncing back and forth between the two of us, we got to bricks and banter. There we go. Yeah. We we uh, do you get phone calls from people ordering pizza? No, we get this occasionally. It's like, hey, do you guys do pizza? Because like brick oven pizza. Oh my god! That's or occasionally, so <laughs> funny. Yeah, we we so that and um, or they're like, hey, we got uh this yard work we need yep. done. Do you do brick and mortar That's, like work? That, that definitely pops up on uh, Instagram for like popular tags like. Like some random city in Ohio uses the hashtag brick mania when they're like Home mm. Depot gets a new sidewalk mm-hmm. in front of it. <laughs> and like that'll get like 50 likes and like pop to the top of like recently trending posts. That's so funny. Brick mania. Good job. Good job. I right. think we featured a town in Canada one time on an episode of brick mania because it's like use the hashtag brick mania and we'll feature you uh, in our in our. And it was like a like this new bank had a new sidewalk and we featured them on an episode. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> it's a good that sidewalk. comes up a lot when you look up like Citizen Brick too. It's just like I don't know. There's like some weird hashtags that come about, but then you actually check it, and it's like, why are people posting to this? Like, what does yeah, this always, even mean? Always check your hashtags before using them. Absolutely. Yeah. Always don't assume that nobody else is using that letter combination. What's the uh, what's your favorite figure that you've designed? My favorite figure that I've designed. Okay, that, that's a tough question. Um, I, I know, I know. It's like picking your children. Picking my children. Um, uh, yeah. Um, let's see. I I really enjoyed how the um World War One German stormtrooper turned out. Um, hmm. There was a lot of. It's between that one and the World War Two, um, like Soviet. Uh, what is it? Engineer 
what are they combat in, combat engineer so okay. they both feature some like texture printing on them so the world war one guy the german guy he's got this uh what do they call it? Like lobster armor or something like that. But it's, it's, Oh this yes. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. And so he's See, got, when you talk about the historical stuff, I'm like, so hopeless. I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's... totally. Lando. I know that one. And then, well, keep, yeah, keep in <laughs> the mind, lobster like armor. I, I know, yeah. I know that one. I'm learning. I'm learning a lot of this as well. Um, right. And it's like, I, I don't, I, I'm not an expert in, in, in history, but like, I'm definitely learning. And then in some fields, it's kind of like, I probably have a good idea. Like camouflage. I can start to recognize that pretty easily. Hmm um but so it's it's i think we're all sort of this is this is one of my favorite parts about all of this is that it's it's one of the best ways to learn about whatever topic that you're choosing to uh recreate in lego um but yeah for the design part of it that that world war one guy a stormtrooper he's super creepy looking he's got this gas mask uh he had a texture texture printing on that um helmet as well and uh he just looked really menacing and kind of like the first time that i felt that a figure um it seemed like almost closer to like a scale model as opposed to just like straight up a minifigure like mm. from Lego or Lego or something. Uh, Cause yeah. it, it came with like a little stand that had like a grunge and bullets uh, like on it, like printed on it. And uh, it seemed like more of a, like a standalone piece as opposed to like a, like just a traditional minifigure. So I thought that was kind of an in- interesting direction that, that I wanted to uh, take custom minifigures to. Uh, yeah, and then kind no, of the same right. with that, that Soviet, uh, um, He's got that amoeba camo, really, really blotchy looking. Um, and then this big giant plate armor on the front that's also kind of uh, menacing looking. So mm. that's just cool looking in its own right. That's why I like that one. For sure. The, the his, it's always about the history behind it. It's not like, I think I did a really awesome job making this. Like that's, that's, it's, you know, it's more so just like, I really appreciate the history behind uh, some of my more favorite pieces. Mm. Yeah. It makes it more impactful. Sure. Just like it has significance. Yeah. How did the Lando's Randos start? Lando's Randos. So um, that was a, that was a fun project. It's still a super fun project. Um, initially, it's like obviously we all we all really love um, like Citizen Brick. He does his uh, CB days with his with his misprints. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's definitely like an inspiration right off the bat. There, it's like man, it's it's he's creating these weird like one off collectibles, and I love that. Um, and um, and kind of, kind of in that vein, it's it's similar in that respect. Obviously, it's these unique pieces that aren't aren't really part of the tradi- the, the stock lineup. Uh, but they really started off uh, even before that was that was a thought. Um, they started off just as test. They really were test prints. They really are test prints mm-hmm. uh, and misprints a lot of it. Like you know, sometimes the computer glitches out or the print bed moves and like it prints like a full half whatever. It it just is really misaligned, and so those will get kind of scrapped and maybe just set aside a test print on again, like there's enough clean surfaces where you can test out a different design on it. And the printers, um, they were doing this and they didn't really have a, like it just, they were ending up in a drawer once they sort of filled up and, um, and they were just like like, scattered around their desk and they would grab it, grab them if they needed another figure to test on. Um, but so I kind of, you know, found those and like, man, these, you know, they were just torsos and legs for the most part. But then when you start to combine them with other misprinted helmets, misprinted heads, uh, they really turn and you can kind of compose them into a, a way that's interesting looking. It's not just it, it, like it's random in the fact that there's lots of random printing on it, but there is a little bit of composition in terms of I try to make the colors sort of coordinate or the weapons and, and I try to give them a little bit of personality. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, 90, 95 percent of the of the stuff going into these on like into a, a, a rando would be um a misprint or a test print um there's a few things like i, I printed a run of skull faces because i thought that was cool yeah yeah um, and those were intentionally done to me right but i'm really not way. putting it's it is it's different from that the like those the cb days or, or there's another like true true red true what's that yeah company? true red's coming up with stuff yeah, like that. yeah it's a bit different than those companies like I, I love what those guys are doing um and but they are I intentionally think, creating yeah, those like in off colors yeah misprint like misprint is sort of the wrong i, I think that's a technically incorrect word for a lot they of that appropriated it's, the term yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know it's it's i mean it's not like who did what for like they obviously like citizen brick obviously is doing that that test print and some like a lot of that was misprint so mm-hmm. it's like um, sort of how it originated and now it's yeah just, the terminology is stuck even though it's grown past that it's yeah. kind of the same sort of discussion if you discuss like how modders have the term modder even though everything is kind of modding in the lego custom world sure sure but 
specifically brick arms modders are the quote unquote modders, but it's like, anyway. Yeah. 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 No, that, that's, it's, they're all, it's all cool in its own right. Um, but, but, uh, I'm not going out of my way to produce, uh, quantities. Fake ones, right? Fake, false, <laughs> false randos. No, mm-hmm. now I think I'm going to put a, put a quantity of, I'm going to intentionally make from the ground up a rando because that would be random. And that's sort of the spirit of it. I want to put weird things that don't fit in the standard product lineup uh, and mix it in into here. Yeah, no, I love them because there's just, I like that it's in touch with the origin of it being like, this is, would have been thrown away practically. Yeah. But there's always something super unique to them. And I love something I wish that Citizen Brick would do with um, their misprints. And something that I appreciate that True Red actually does is that they'll, really experimental with how things are placed and like it comes across it comes it happens naturally with the nature of your misprints and the landos randos that they have like really interesting combinations of stacked prints yeah and system brick did that did that with like the ammo chains and like there's a few misprints that you could find here and there that are like super unique like i found you remember uh his weird al torso the hawaiian shirt I found one of those with the German, um, just like German World War II rig over it. <laughs> I think and it's we like, have a, yeah, we have a German that's such a somewhere. unique like mix print that it's like almost, you know, it's usable in a way. Yeah. And like True Red, as they started experimenting and getting into the game, they did that with a couple products, which is really cool to see. But like yours, it's like coming about that in a very natural, organic way, which is, it's cool because you just like kind of, there's some of them that like, not to call them like bad, but they're like sort of a miss. It's like, oh yeah, this one's just like totally off the walls. Oh, there's some then, that are like terrible and gross. And <laughs> but then there's some that it's like, whoa, this is like, <laughs> like at uh, at Brick Fair when I was admiring your watch, you gave Vic a rando, and you also gave me one too because I was just standing there and I right was like, oh, thank you, Lando. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's, do you, I, I do remember that. I remember it's it is those shows are so much fun. Um, do you do you remember which rando it was? I don't recall yeah, that. Yeah, no, I'll take a photo of it and send right you it. But there was something really cool about the way the legs were combined with like the total random prints. Like I don't even I think it was oh man, I don't remember the movie or anything. It was one of the movie kits. There was like this figure with like or nah like pinkish sort of legs design or something, and then it okay. had a camouflage on it too. I'll find it. I, I'll find it. I have it find specifically it. somewhere. So I'll good, uh, good. I'll have it to the wrap up and I'll, I'll send I'll, you I'll it bring as well. some randos along with me to the show as well. So terrific, terrific. I'll trade you some uh, some torsos. I just got commissioned for one. Yes. Have you I, seen I, them? I don't know. I haven't posted it, so you wouldn't have seen it. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw it. You commissioned it to us. No, you didn't. Um, I didn't see them. Hold on up. They're uh, you... space mushrooms, as I'm calling them. Oh, hand drawn space mushrooms. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I just sent you them. Take a look. Okay, okay. Space mushrooms. See, I'm on your I'm on your bricks and banter page here. You can just ah, it's oh. in your DMs. It's in DMs. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's lovely. Um, yeah, that like is wonderful. A space urchin, <laughs> <laughs> sea yeah. urchin. Yeah, a space. It's a space urchin. Wow. That's, so, yeah. that's that's. I like how you have it in multiple colors. You know, fun for the whole family. It's great. Fun for the whole family. Totally. That's, that's actually going to be on the copper drop. Copper drop. Okay. You're putting me on the spot here, man. Um <laughs> I think I, I would trade. Right. Is that okay. like a, is that like there a middle ground? There we go. We're making we're breaking new ground here. Cop drop or trade. Trade. I'll I'll trade. I have some eclipse graphic stuff that I think would be a nice trade. <laughs> hey, I'll take EG. I don't discriminate. There we go. All right, man. Well, let's uh let's head on into copper drop as we're speaking about it. Let's do this. So first up here, we have a release that's been super, super hyped up, uh, sold out instantly to my knowledge, was uh, Nazi Bricks Fallout Armor, the power armor. How are you feeling about that? Resin I, printed. Yeah, yeah. That thing is, is is awesome. So I was wondering, is was that sold? Like, is that paint? That's painted, right? I think, I don't know if he sold painted versions, but that's definitely painted up. The one that is in the photo. Yeah, yeah. So if that thing was painted, man, that, that is an absolute cop. I thought they, that thing was gorgeous. I actually messaged him. I was like, come on, man, I want one. Um, <laughs> but I think they I think they sold out. I'm assuming they sold out. Um, yeah, they did. But those are those are awesome. I think uh, that's one of the better interpretations of uh, that power armor that I've seen. Mm-hmm. So and I'm, I'm loving this. I'm loving where the uh, like custom community is pushing this, this uh, 3D printing. And uh, some, you know, some of it's like a little, in my opinion, too, um, 
like just a scaled down version of it, which I don't think that's quite true to the Lego spirit. Like I think, mm. I think Will's doing a, a, a pretty much perfect job at keeping his Lego fying. Yeah, yeah. Lego fying them. Cause man, just buy a GI Joe if you want like the, the a scaled down version of it, you know, it's, right, it's, right. uh, so th- I think maybe the laser gun on that thing is it's gorgeous, but maybe a little bit too detailed. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, it's, it's no, so it's cool. A fair, that, fair. It's cool. What I would have liked to see, cause I think the, I could be totally wrong on this, but it definitely looks like it from the perspective is that the feet kind of raise up, you know, they like, there's yeah, like some you padding saw the, underneath in a way. Yep. If you saw the, I think there's a side by side picture uh, on that same post where it definitely looks like it's inner, it's a full plate higher. Yeah. Um, like where the eyes would be or where the hands would be. Like if you look at the hands. are getting mainstream. See, yeah, oh, yeah, totally, is, yeah. He has a side-by-side next to the minifigure. Yeah, you can see where the hand is. That, that mm-hmm. It's a full like plate higher. So, yes, yeah. that's, that's, this is a heavily modified plate um, attached to the bottom of a, of a I would have just plate. liked to see that the uh, hands came out a little longer. Like, if he just fully 3D printed arms that were longer, that'd be really sick. Yeah, I'm wondering how much is, like, actual figure underneath of that. Like, is that arm That's a attached, great question. I don't know. to a figure, but... Uh, overall, I mean that it it it's, looks it's like it's impeccable. Overall, though, it's, yeah, it's great. So, cop. Yeah, I would have copped if I didn't realize. I woke up and then it was sold out, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> I guess oh, that yeah. happened." Dang it! Dang it. <laughs> All right, and uh, here we go. Next up, we have from Eclipse Graphics another resin printed item. They did a whole line of these new, definitely not Star Wars, Star Wars vehicles. Um, specifically, we could just talk about the ATW, um, but as a whole, as well, how are you feeling about those? Uh, it's really clever. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd pick that up, man. It's um, it's a nice use of that was a transparent resin. Mm-hmm. Um, it it really gets that uh, hologram um, hologram look to yeah. it. And what's someone comment on this? It's like it's so it's got you can see the print lines. You know, it's when it's up close, you can the resin printing still you see the 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 resolution lines but as one of the one of the commenters was saying that it actually kind of adds to that holographic look it does it does so touche victor you win this one <laughs> i'll pick up your your uh paraphernalia man that's fine yeah I, i'd pick that up yeah i just actually ordered mine today but despite, i have sh- despite coming from victor i would buy that <laughs> i actually picked up the gray one because i'm gonna pick up i'll pick up the each holographic ones um in person at yeah. Virginia, but I picked up um, the gray ones because I want to try and get together a photo of like them painted up like rusty and stuff. I want to do that before Virginia, but oh, nice. We'll see what happens. Yeah, that'd be a, that'd be a. a I don't think nice... I'll have any minifigures actually in the post. It'll just be that one and the um, God. I don't even know the name of the actual. It's not a Tie Fighter, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah Tie Fighter. You're asking the um, wrong guy. <laughs> Whatever the <laughs> ball one is with the, you know, the wings on the side and they're, you know, the Sith. Um, I just offended like th- all of the Star Wars fans, but that's the okay. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, you know, the opposite the, of the, the I, is that the interceptor or is God, it the, uh, I, who knows, man. Is that the, is that the why would there's somebody screaming right now, pulling their hair out. Is that it's they a called it the dual ion engine fighter? And of that's what I did. bought. Yeah. Dual ion engine fighter. And that's what I bought. Yeah, but anyway, I'm trying to. <laughs> is it I'm the Darth Vader the... Tie Fighter? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. There we go. Um, See, I just watched like a ripped like VHS of A New Hope. Like that was the only one I ever watched as a kid because <laughs> I don't, I don't know. <laughs> You've never watched all of them? Yeah, I've watched. I mean, since then, oh, okay, I, since sure, sure, sure. I, I don't, I don't know if I've actually watched them all in like, you know, in one oh, sitting in order. Mm. or in like a sitting. That's intense. I, I think I've seen like I, I really, so I really like that aesthetically it's a cool universe mm-hmm. um yeah i'll just leave it there i mean that's that's the, yeah i, I, prefer, <laughs> I agree i prefer star trek honestly it's it's Ooh. Yeah, like by quite a bit <laughs> i never got so into star trek the droids are okay let me the droids are awesome in in star wars like the droids are super cool like the robotics of it i don't know why the heck they gave them the stupidest voices on the planet but like those are cool lightsabers are awesome like Darth Maul is arguably one of the coolest characters in any universe, but then they just go ahead and like kill him in like 30 seconds. Like that's great. Same thing with Qui-Gon Jinn. He's like one of the most badass Jedi ever. And then you know, he just gets stabbed. That's, that's cool. That's how that ends. Like you just <laughs> killed your two best characters 
and then spent a billion dollars on Jar Jar Binks. Like, what? Okay. Now that you frame it that way, I have a very different interpretation of uh, Star Wars. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's the. I think that's the rough plot line for episodes one, two, and three. <laughs> Coolest characters die. Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar. <laughs> Roll credits. Have you heard the conspiracy theories that um, he's Jar Jar Binks is the Sith or something? So maybe I am secretly a Star Wars fan because yes, I have heard this. And yeah, I know. Yeah, it's it's a plausible theory. It is. On, it's shockingly on, plausible based on terrible film editing, and that's about it. That's the extent. That's how most conspiracy theories go. It's just yeah, maybe that's true, but probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. Just putting, putting, putting the hammer down on that one. Maybe Jar Jar Binks is the Sith Lord. I like that. Let's go with it. Pr- the movies are a lot better when you think he is. Yep. That's what we'll just leave it there. And last up, um, this popped in onto my feed just before we started recording. So we have Forrest Moonbricks, the U.S. Uh, Pararescue PJs. How are you feeling about this figure? I, yeah, I think I'd pick that one up. That's, it's, uh, I've been, so he's newer to the scene, right? Yeah, a bit. Yeah, I think um, uh, only like a year or two, maybe. Yeah, overall, so like his his style is really tight. It's um, he's using very fine lines. I think maybe a little bit finer than I would personally personally prefer is just my aesthetic taste. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but the uh, there's some really intricate stitch work. He's he's doing a good job. I'm glad to see uh, um, the uh, just more options and and uh, um, I'm liking those those ammo pouches. They're uh, they're cool. Mine's due for an update, so. We'll see if I can take some inspiration from the community, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's doing a great job, so I'm. I'm. It's cool to see. I think I, I've messaged this guy before. So we talked. We were talking about uh, his multi cam. He did. It, that's a really pain in the butt camo to yeah. um, to 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 do. So he's doing a great job with that, and especially to add the gradient to it, just to flex. Yeah, it's yeah. Just... So awesome that there is uh, some more options out there, and uh, I'm excited to see what more and more he's producing. So, yeah. yeah big fan of this one technically not a cop because i already bought the first iteration of his multi-cam so i don't need a second one right now but uh yeah yeah it's, it's awesome there's another there's another newer guy that's kind of got the uh more like fine style like this um he had like a minifigure with dreads and oh like, uh tattoos. brick creator yeah he's another one that's doing a it's a really really intricate uh designs yeah there, some of them really slap. I do enjoy yeah. some of them. Um, I don't know how to feel about the company overall after there was some weird beef of him possibly selling G Brick stuff. Beef oh. recasts. Um, um, that's not cool. It's not Re- recasts are weird. That's uh, until I don't know. As things are, it seems for certain that that was the case. He said that he would bring to light what was the issues and what you know clear his name, but I haven't seen that. Okay. Happened since. Um, I don't know. I'm skeptical to support that until then, but I can't deny that there is some really awesome stuff he's got going. I was really excited about his work until then. You know, what is what's the saying? It's like don't meet your uh, don't meet your heroes or whatever. Don't meet yeah. like, the artist. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Like oh, that's my favorite song, and then they turn out to just like this guy that just kicks puppies or something <laughs> terrible. I don't know. Well, Billy, you, you kick puppies, don't you? Is that your that's your thing? I scam people. You I don't kick the people. puppies. I just scam them. Yeah. Same difference. You scam puppies, man. That's messed I up. Scam puppies, right? <laughs> Knock it off. I'll scam your puppy at Brickfair. No. <laughs> what does that mean? Does that mean something? Uh, <laughs> no. I think you just take it literally. Okay. Do you okay. have a dog? I don't. Well, I guess then I can't scam him. Dang. Dang it! I'll get a dog for the occasion. All right. Well, there we go. And yeah. with that, I don't think there's a better note to really end it on. That's a great, yeah, great ending point. Billy the puppy scammer, children crying, Jar Jar Binks is the worst. Awesome. Yep. Pl- proud to be a plagger. Proud plagger. Thank you so much for coming on, Lando. It was actually, it was really awesome to get to talk to you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at the end of the month. So any last words? Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to seeing you. And I hope that anyone listening in is also going to make it to a uh, brick fair or any other place that uh that uh, we're at check out our newsletter uh that you can keep up to date with all that sort of stuff um, absolutely yeah uh totally a pleasure um being here uh let's do this again sometime soon man yes please good talking man good talking well then what a show thank you very much for coming on lando and i look forward to seeing you later on this week 
Thank you all for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please share the podcast with a friend or repost us on Instagram. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you again to Nate's Minifigs for sponsoring this episode. You can check out his website, natesminifigs.com, and use promo code BM4 at checkout for 15% off. Now, I've been really excited with the opportunity of the podcast's first official sponsor, but I don't want that to take away from the shine of the tried and true supporters on Patreon. Many of you have been helping make this podcast happen from the very beginning, and I cannot thank you guys enough. So with that, a huge shout out is owed to Seth, Mike, Justin, Francisco, Dash Bricks, Jay Bricks, PK Custom Lego, Milo, Jay, Mini Bigs, and Thomas. The support really means a lot. Thank you all again for listening, and I hope you come back next time to listen in on my conversation with some of the World in Darkness story leaders. What's World in Darkness, you might ask? Well, I suppose you'll have to find out next time. See you soon.